hello dear students welcome back to the session on a simple band break and in the previous pro class uh, we have discussed about uh, the problems on simple band break and again the we will continue with the same concept that is the problems on simple band break so with uh, the things which are given differently here say with respect to previous problems what we have discussed there uh, we have to calculate uh, the operating force that is required and along with that at the most we have calculated the uh, dimensions of the brake lever now you know, if you take this problem which is also asked in one of the previous question papers so a simple band brake shown in figure having a diameter of 600 mm and uh, the angle of contact or the lap or angle of wrap of the band is 225 degrees and uh, here the power which is absorbed during the application of brake is 45 kilowatts and uh, the speed of the drum is 500 rpm so that is what n and uh, power is denoted by means of the notation capital p and which is in kilowatt keep that value in kilowatt itself and uh, then uh, we have to select the suitable materials here so materials are not given related to say either band as well as brake lever so we have to select suitable materials and uh, based upon that we have to proceed with the design part and uh, in addition to that the figure which is given so by seeing the figure you have to note down the uh, necessary information such as uh, diameter of the uh, drum that is 600 mm shown in the figure so the radius of the drum that becomes 300 mm and the angle of contact or angle of lap by seeing the figure that is 225 degrees and uh, b value that is the distance between the end of the one of the end of the band from the fixed point that is fixed on the uh, brake lever so there is 300 mm and uh, a that is the distance between the line of action of uh, braking force or operating force from the fulcrum point so the distance between these two that is represented here as a but uh, in the question statement or in the question figure uh, the distance uh, is given as 700 from uh, the end of the band which is connected to the brake lever up to the line of action of braking force but uh, the distance that is to be considered for uh, with respect to this case is from the fulcrum point to the line of action of force f that is a so a is equals to 300 plus 700 that is equal to 1000 mm and also as we know that uh, theta value which is given in terms of degrees so we have to use that value in terms of radians in the rest of the equation so it is to be converted into radians by multiplying uh, this degree value by pi divided by 180 degrees so that uh, you will be getting the value of theta as 3.92 radians so this is what the uh, about the given information so the given information that we have listed here so in the next case we have to assume the materials also so with respect to the respective steps while solving the or while performing the design of simple band break so during that itself we can assume the materials also or otherwise in the beginning itself we can assume the material so as with respect to this problem i have assumed the leather is the material which is used as a friction material or friction lining material which is a uh, uh, in line with or it is which is attached to the front face of the um, band <laughs> or the particular surface which is come in contact with the drum and uh, this is to be noted from table number 13.8 of uh, data handbook page number 286 or there is one more table in the same data handbook uh, page number 287 it is uh, table number 13.11 so better you refer 13.11 table so this table is to be referred so we have to uh, assume the leather as the friction material and uh, this is to be taken from the table number 13.11 and also you will be getting one more table there the value of mu that is noted from 13.8 also so you can refer table number 13.11 page number 286 of the data handbook 
So by referring uh, this table, you will be getting the value of coefficient of friction as 0 0.4. And uh, allowable pressure, that value is uh, around about 0.18 megapascal, that is Newton per mm square itself. So these are the two important values which are required in the beginning, say pressure value as well as uh, coefficient of friction value. Actually, we require coefficient of friction value. So the pressure that is required for the calculation or while solving the problem related to or with respect to the diameter case, the fulcrum point. So this is what uh, uh, we have to use the table number 13.11 page number 287 to note down the values of a friction material or properties of friction material. So friction material which is used here is leather. The next thing uh, we have to follow the steps or the design procedure according to the design procedure of a simple band break. Say torque value is to be calculated first. Say torque T is to be calculated by using the fundamental expression of power. So power is given by 2 pi nt divided by 60 into 1000. So by using this relation, so torque T that you can calculate. So we have to rearrange the terms. So and you have to substitute the value of P in kilowatt itself here. So that the resulting answer what we get here for the torque is 859.5, which is in Newton meter. So Newton meter that is to be converted into Newton mm. So the same value is to be multiplied by 1000 again. So that it gives the value in terms of Newton mm. Newton mm. And uh, the value is T is equal to 859.5 into 10 raised to 3 multiplication factor to convert meter into mm. The unit is Newton mm here. The next step. The second step that is to calculate the tangential force. Tangential force is denoted by Ft. So Ft that we can calculate by using the equation of torque again. So there is another equation to calculate torque whenever you know the tangential force or the force resisting force Ft multiplied by radius of the drum. So this equation gives the value of torque also, but the torque is known here. R is also known that is radius of the drum only the FT value that is unknown. So you can use make use of FT equation FT is equal to T divided by R. So this equation gives the value of uh, FT as 2865 newtons. So this is the tangential force which is required. So this is essential here to calculate the uh, forces acting at the on the tight side of the band as well as slack side of the band so the next step what we have to carry out is to calculate f1 and f2 that is f1 is the tension or the force exerted on the tight side of the band and f2 be the force or the tension exerted on the slack side so these forces are to be calculated so as by using the fundamental expression that is we have already discussed in the during the design procedure how this ft equation that is or f1 and f2 equations they are derived so by using this relation that is f1 minus f2 is equal to ft and also there is a ratio which is called as driving tension ratio f1 by f2 is equal to e raised to mu theta so by using the these two relations we have to simplify and we have to express f1 in terms of ft and mu theta as well as f2 in terms of ft and e raised to mu theta so by using uh, the data handbook page number 269 the converted equations they are already available so make use of this equation that is f1 is equal to ft into e raised to mu theta divided by e raised to mu theta minus 1 so ft value is 2865 that is known or calculated e raised to mu theta e raised to mu mu is 0.4 noted and 3.92 is the radians which is the value of theta so once you substitute all the values so the value of f1 that you get here as 3619.5 newtons so this is f1 and uh, f2 value f2 value is to be calculated by using again page number 269 of data handbook ft into 1 by e raised to mu theta minus 1 this is the equation substitute all the respective values and get the value of f2 as 754.5 newtons so these are the two parameters or the essential parameters which are required for the further calculations 
so f1 and f2 once you get the values of f1 and f2 the next step is to go for the calculation of operating force that is force required to operate or to apply the brake at the end of the lever so with respect to that so the given sketch that is uh, resembles uh, the figure e of the data handbook so that is available in page number 270 so refer figure e of the data handbook uh, of page number 270 so which is uh, the similar sketch as we have or the question statement that includes or having so by seeing the particular figure and uh, there are two possible cases one is a clockwise rotation another one is a anti clockwise rotation so first you consider the case of clockwise rotation so if the drum is rotating in clockwise direction so this is just to know uh, which side is uh, tight side and which side is slack side this is important here so here the left side that is be that becomes the tight side and the force or the tension induced here that is tight side force or the f1 and uh, another one is that is f2 which is acting in the direction opposite to the rotation which is uh, having less force called as slack side force and uh, the remaining values they are also or the notations they are um, having the same meaning so only f1 and f2 they are to be not indicated here and uh, by using the equation available in the data and book also we can solve the or we can get the value of f or otherwise taking summation of moments about the fulcrum point and equating the moments equal to 0 or sum of moments equal to 0 by using the condition of equilibrium f a minus f2 into b f a giving f into a that gives the moment in the clockwise direction and f2 into b this gives the moment in the anti clockwise direction so both are having opposite directions and f a minus f2 b equal to 0 and uh, next thing that we have to solve this and get the value of f so this is available in the equation so f is equal to f2 into b divided by a available in the equation 13.19c of the data handbook page number 270 page number 270 so by using uh, this equation also in uh, page number 270 by referring page number 270 that is f equal to f2 into b divided by a what we have derived earlier so you can solve the or you can get the value of f by substituting f2 and uh, b value and a value so this is the first case so second case is for the clockwise rotation for counter clockwise rotation that is for ccw so for counter clockwise rotation what happens the interchange of uh, the tight side and the slack side tensions that takes place here so the right side that will be the force exerted in the tight side so tight side and uh, left side will be the slack side and the force is f2 here and the equation of moments say summation of moments that we can take about the fulcrum point so that f a is equal to f1 b f into a Uh, multiplied by or equal to f2 f1 into b so which is opposite moment so that uh, that is written on the other side of the equal sign and the equation what we get here is f equal to f1 into b divided by a so this is also available in the data handbook as equation number 13.19d 13.19d of page number 270 itself same page and uh, same figure e <laughs> so by using uh, this equation also you can get the value because same equation what we have derived there we will be getting the direct equation so 1085.8 newtons so here by seeing these two values for clockwise rotation it is uh, uh, how much 226.3 and for counter clockwise rotation it is 1085 so by comparing these two values the maximum one is to be selected as the maximum force f so f max is equal to the 1085.8 newtons which is available for the which is obtained for the counter clockwise rotation so for f max is to be consider f max is to be taken as the maximum of these two forces so that is 1085.8 newtons so this is what the maximum force required and uh, after that the next step is to carry out the design of band that is band design step so here band material is also not given so for that what we uh, uh, the thing is given there we have to assume the materials suitably so since the band uh, we have to assume here as steel band itself and for that a sigma d is assumed here is 50 mpa so usually the value of sigma d for steel band is to be assumed in between 50 to 
maximum value is uh, 56. So up to that, you can assume either minimum value or maximum value also you can assume. And uh, the equation they are given directly in uh, page number 269. So H is equal to 0 0.005 D, that is uh, 3 mm, that is the value of H. And uh, width of band is given by F1 divided by H into sigma D. So this is again 13.18 equation. 13.18 and uh, equation is O, N and O. So by using uh, page number 269 again, page number 269 of data handbook. So by using this equation, so you can get the value of uh, width of the band as 25 mm. So you will be getting less than 25, round it off to the uh, highest, the next largest value. And F1 value is known here, calculated and sigma D is assumed 50. So substitute and H is calculated. So the answer that you get here is um, 25 mm. The next uh, step is the design of uh, lever. So this uh, design of lever that includes, again, consideration of rectangular cross section itself. So the material for this is also not given. So assume the material for the uh, brake lever as C30 steel from the data handbook uh, appendix number one, appendix number one, page number 463 of the data handbook. So this is what the case that we have to assume the material for the brake lever and uh, if possible, you can continue the same material for the fulcrum pin also if it is asked. Now here brake lever which is assumed as made of uh, uh, C30 steel and uh, for this we have to note down the values of yield stress and a factor of safety. So if it is based upon the yield stress means you can assume the factor of safety in between 2 to 3 or say it may be 2.5 or it you can assume that value up to 3 also up to 3 so this also you can assume for the factor of safety and this is what the value of sigma y for c30 steel yield stress so once you assume these two values the next thing is you have to assume the depth of the lever is to be uh, in terms of width that is uh, twice the width you can assume twice or thrice the width so here we have assumed uh, two times b1 so we can uh, consider this relation with respect to the width and uh, depth uh, next thing that we have to carry out the uh, calculation part so to get the dimensions so to get the dimensions we have to make use of uh, bending equation so bending equation that is m by i is equal to sigma by c so I is moment of inertia, which is given by B1 H1 cube divided by 12. And C is the CG of uh, the particular cross section that is H1 by 2 from extreme fiber. And M is the maximum bending moment given by F max into A. What is this F max? F max is maximum of F for clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. So maximum F is uh, which is for counterclockwise rotation, which is already defined. And the sigma is the bending stress, which is not given. So by using sigma y by FOS, that is 294.2.5. Uh, and this is noted from page number 463 of the data handbook, appendix number 1. And the value what we get is 117.68 Newton per mm square. So substitute all the values and uh, you will be getting initially the value of B1 as uh, 23 point something so you will get uh, or 22 or you will be getting so it is to be rounded off so it will be 24 mm and then the value of h1 that is uh, two times the width so that is 2 into 24 that value is 48 mm so these are the dimensions of the cross section that is a rectangular cross section uh, of the brake lever and uh, next uh, thing that is uh, remaining here is to design the fulcrum pin. So to carry out uh, the design of fulcrum pin, uh, we have to assume some of the cases here, some of the things here, such as initially we have to define the diameter of the fulcrum pin as DP and length of the pin is to be assumed as LP. And uh, after that, the maximum force, maximum force or the maximum tension is to be taken as F1 and which is uh, there for the clockwise rotation because uh, yet uh, for the fulcrum pin there are two forces which are exerted either f1 or f2 f1 or f2 these are the two kinds of two forces which are exerted c for f1 will be 
uh, induced in on the or acting on the fulcrum pin when the drum is rotating in clockwise direction and f2 is the force exerted on the fulcrum pin when the drum is rotating in the counter clockwise direction so we have to consider uh, the maximum cases itself while designing anything so maximum uh, force is f1 for clockwise rotation so this itself is to be considered here so by considering the bending stress expression that is uh, sigma b for pin is equal to f1 divided by dp into lp so it is to be assumed as here the rectangular cross section itself uh, so that's why the equation is written like this or even you can assume or you can use the shear stress equation also say so shear stress equation is given by or this is subjected to double shear uh, and uh, you can cal calculate uh, uh, the diameter of the pin there by subjecting uh, or by considering the induced shear stress in the pin so now we have considered the bending action here so f1 divided by dp into lp this is what the expression force divided by cross sectional area so assume that uh, lp that is length of pin is 1.5 times uh, dp you can assume equal value also but a uh, little bit more used to used to be assumed so 1.5 times dp and the sigma b is assumed here as 10 newton per mm square 10 newton per mm square and uh, you have to substitute all the values so that the dp value what you get is 16 mm and the lp value you will be getting as 24 mm so these are the two parameters which are required or which are additional here related to the uh, simple band break so where we have to carry out the design of fulcrum pin so you can carry out like this also or we can assume uh, uh, shear the uh, particular uh, pin is subjected to the shearing action therefore we can use the shear stress equation also so if you use the shear stress equation what happens so there also you'll be getting the same equation or same kind of expression that is the tau pin is equal to it is subjected to double shear no doubt therefore it is to be written as f1 divided by 2 times or simply pi by 4 into dp square so by using uh, this expression also you can get the value of dp now, there may be variation in the answer but uh, you have to if this is also correct by considering uh, the shearing condition <laughs> so this is another case so based upon this you have to solve the problems if it is asked like this so in the next session i will take uh, one more uh, two different problems on simple band break itself and uh, that will be the last session for the uh, simple band break so we will continue in the next session thank you